Sixty years ago, the discovery of four Neanderthal skeletons in Shanidar Cave in northern Iraq challenged the notion that our ancestors were just thick-browed thugs. Some scholars even argued that the extinct human species practiced burial customs. An archaeological team has returned to Shanidar Cave and discovered the upper portion of a Neanderthal skeleton near where the four complete skeletons were originally excavated. Other scholars have questioned this interpretation, claiming that the four Neanderthals died as a result of exposure or a rockfall. Recent excavations near the Shanidar Four remains have prompted a rethinking of this hypothesis. The collection of bones, known as Shanidar Z, were surrounded by rapidly accumulating sediment, implying that the body had been intentionally covered. Other mortal remains of Neanderthals have been discovered in the cave, but they appear to date from up to 30,000 years after Shanidar Z and the other four burials. All of this evidence will help us better understand the complexities of Neanderthal burial practices. It may have changed over time, indicating different cultural traditions, which has a very human characteristic. Nevertheless, the fossils discovered in the cave provide new evidence that the species buried their dead through mortuary rituals. The remains, which included a crushed but intact skull, upper thorax and both hands, were recently discovered at the Shanidar cave site, 500 miles north of Baghdad. Another Neanderthal skeleton discovered in the cave, already famous for fossils of our big-headed cousins, provides new evidence that they buried their dead, as well as intriguing hints that flowers may have been used in such rituals. Scientists said they discovered a well-preserved upper-body skeleton of an adult Neanderthal who lived approximately 70,000 years ago in Shanidar Cave in northern Iraq's Kurdistan region. According to dental wear and protein analysis, Shanidar Z was likely in her 40s or 50s. She died at a time when the earth was rapidly cooling, signalling the start of an extreme cold period. Archaeologists discovered two more Neanderthal bodies, next to and slightly below where Shanidar IV was discovered, as well as additional bones and teeth just beneath these remains. Ongoing research into Neanderthal skeletons discovered in Iraq during the 1950s suggests the existence of a more complex social structure than previously thought. The three bodies appear to have been positioned next to a massive rock in a gully-like feature where water occasionally flowed. The body's relative depth suggests that they were placed here at different times, possibly over tens to hundreds of years. Shanidar IV and Shanidar Z appear to have been positioned roughly the same way, as if looking out of the cave, and while the remains of the third Neanderthal are too sparse to determine its burial position, its head appears to be facing east as well. Neanderthals were once thought to be primitive cavemen, driven extinct by smarter modern humans, but research has revealed that they were sophisticated beings who cared for the bodies of the deceased and performed burial rituals. Neanderthals are known to have buried their dead and exhibit mortuary behaviours that are difficult to interpret, with significant variation among Neanderthals. What is important here is the intentionality of the burial. You may bury a body for practical reasons, such as avoiding dangerous scavengers and or reducing the smell. However, when this extends beyond practical elements, it is significant because it indicates more complex, symbolic and abstract thinking, compassion and care for the deceased, and possibly feelings of mourning and loss. Whether the Neanderthal group of dead, buried in the cave around 70,000 years ago, were separated by a few years, decades, centuries, or even millennia, it is clear that Shanidar Cave was a unique location, with bodies placed only in one part of a large cave. The Neanderthal's behaviour was highly variable, including their relationship with the deceased. Several dozen Neanderthal burial sites have been discovered in Europe, the Middle East and Central Asia. Such discoveries have been described as extraordinary, but the evidence for Neanderthal burials and culture is unequivocal. Neanderthals were divided into at least two basic ethnic groups based on their geographical distribution, which ran north to south. Southern Neanderthals from the Iberian Peninsula, the Balkans, the Middle East and Italy had larger and shorter faces than northern Neanderthals from populations living north of the Pyrenees, the Alps and Central and Eastern Europe. Shanidar IV, the Neanderthal skeleton discovered in 1960, 
and buried in a partial fetal position, sparked a dramatic reappraisal of our ancient cousins. The dense cluster of burials at Shanidar Cave, on the other hand, remains critical to our understanding of Neanderthals, and woody tissue samples collected from the site could hold the key to learning more about their burial rituals. While these findings may indicate a belief in an afterlife or ritualistic behavior, it is also possible that these actions served a more practical or symbolic purpose in the cultural context of Neanderthal societies. The interpretation of such evidence remains speculative, and researchers continue to study Neanderthal cognitive and symbolic abilities. Some researchers believe that Neanderthals covered their dead bodies with flowers and other vegetation, placing the spiky yellow star thistle on top of the deceased Neanderthals rather than beneath them may have shielded the bodies from scavenging. The Shanidar flower burial, as it became known, portrayed Neanderthals as empathic beings who cared enough about their dead to search the mountains for funeral bouquets. New evidence suggests that this interpretation was incorrect, but Neanderthals may still have performed elaborate funerary rituals. What is becoming clear is that Neanderthals visited this cave at least three times, camped on the sediments nearby, and buried a body. Although it is difficult to infer traditions from archaeology, this appears to be a tradition of disposing of the dead in a very similar manner, and it is clearly done with care, as two of the bodies are very complete. When taken together, the findings indicate that traditions were passed down through generations and that Neanderthals may have lived in a world where stories and symbolic ideas influenced their actions. In other ways, they were human beings like us, and they clearly buried some of their dead at times. However, Shanidar III's story is based on specific circumstances rather than large evolutionary forces. Shanidar III has a severe and deep rib cut on his left side. This cut would have been deep enough to collapse his lung, making Shanidar III the only known victim of Neanderthal sapiens conflict. If that is the case, even if the plants were not a funerary gift or memorial as we might imagine, they would still be highly significant in behavioural terms, as there are very few well-supported cases of objects or materials intentionally left with Neanderthal skeletons, one being a partial deer jaw with a young Neanderthal child from this site of Amud, and another, possibly, a stone flake found very close to Shanidar Zed's hand. According to scientists who examined the Amud skeleton, a Neanderthal baby whose remains were recently discovered in a cave in northern Israel was intentionally buried. The discovery of bones in Amud cave near the Sea of Galilee contributes to our understanding of Neanderthal culture. Several alleged Neanderthal burials have been debunked in recent years, but the Amud burial could be less contentious. The baby's bones were discovered articulated, indicating that it had not suffered serious injuries. The ten-month-old infant was laid to rest on its right side in a small niche against the north wall of Amud Cave. Although the skull has been crushed and the face has been severely damaged, the majority of the skeleton has survived 50 to 60 years of burial. According to researchers, a red deer jawbone was found on the pelvis implying that it was a ritual offering. Three limb bones from another baby, possibly aged six to nine months, were discovered nearby. Researchers believe the Amud infant was a Neanderthal rather than a fully modern human who lived in the Levant during the last Ice Age. The baby's foramen magnum, the hole in the base of the skull through which the spinal cord passes, is round rather than oval. There are some extra strong muscle attachments on the inside of the lower jaw, implying the development of powerful jaw movement later in life. And there is no chin. <laughs> the presence of these characteristics in such a young individual highlights the distinction between Neanderthals and modern humans, and acts to exclude Neanderthals from our own ancestry, according to researchers. The Amud cave was used by Neanderthals during one of the last Ice Age's cold spells, when the Middle East would have been warmer and wetter than the frozen lands further north. Additional early human remains, including an adult skeleton, were discovered at the Amud site. Although these bones are not as well preserved as the infants, they are believed to be Neanderthal. Initially, scientists thought Neanderthals were only capable of primitive thought and animalistic savagery. As evidence of these human ancestors' surprising human-like traits accumulated, 
some scientists' perspectives changed. Given the length of time since Neanderthals roamed Eurasia, it is impossible to accurately reconstruct their lives and deaths. Nonetheless, the mystery of these human ancestors, as well as tantalizing hints that they were similar to us, continues to inspire research and debate today. Nonetheless, the ancestors of the Homo sapiens tribes, aided by their ability to make warmer, more form-fitting clothing, had already moved into the Neanderthals' former territories. Thus, modern humans established a foothold that they never lost. The Neanderthals lived in increasingly small and isolated areas, suffering from what is now known as habitat loss, and eventually vanished from the planet. The Neanderthals were intelligent. They had brains the same size as the Cro-Magnon and were extremely adept at utilizing local resources, but they lacked the ability to broaden their perspectives and adapt to changing circumstances. The grave furnishings, as previously discussed, demonstrate that the Neanderthals believed in life after death. Neanderthal humans frequently buried their dead in shallow graves with no special protection, whereas early Homo sapiens were the first to carefully cover the grave with stones. The dead man was given not only his best weapons, but also food for his lengthy journey. Were these intended to protect against hungry predators or to keep the dead man from returning? And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other videos. Thank you and take care.